Connect. Hello, welcome to Affinity Connect on this platform where we we'll reach you with exciting information, being it um, entertainment, art, politics, we're here to give it to you just as it's happening. Today, as Elian advertised on the program, we've got somebody very special, a uh, distinguished Nigerian, a lady uh, that has done the country proud, uh, like I said, yeah, British Nigerian. She's based in the UK and she's been organizing a program that's been, you know, celebrating the black community. They call Miss uh, Ebony, Miss Black Ebony, U um, UK. And she's been doing the country Nigerian proud and she's been doing Africa as a large as a uh, continent proud and she's involved in so many humanitarian projects of course she's also co-founded recently the nigerian festival uk uh, so many uh, uh things that she has done well i have the singular honor privilege to have on the uh, show this today on the program we've got madam irene let me bring madam irene to the program madam irene how are you doing it's good to have you on Pretty Connect once again. It's good to have you. I'm doing great. Thank you once again, um, Mr. Adams, for bringing me to your show. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening to our viewers. It's always nice to have you. I want to commend you. I know you personally, and I'm, I know your passion, and I know how you work. Um, you know, it's, it's good what you're doing. And I'm happy to have you on the show. And of course, a lot of people out there are also very impressed with what you do. Tell us about yourself. For those that just tune in right now, I say, why is Adam talking about this? Irene, where is she from? Who is Irene? Tell us more about yourself, please. Um, Irene is the CEO and founder of Ebony Ambassador UK and the um, founder of uh, Miss Ebony uh, Creativity Contest. I co-founded Nigerian Festival. I'm a mother. I'm a wife. I'm blessed with two boys. Um, I wear different hats, to be sincere. Uh, I will say I'm a graphic designer. I'm an event planner. I'm a human rights activist. I'm a correspondent. I love everything community engagement. And I will say I'm a, a women development specialist as well. So I do a lot in the community, but in all, I love skills empowerment. So everything we do center on skills empowerment. Fantastic. Talking about skills empowerment, I know you've empowered a lot of young Africans, female precisely, uh, fortunate and privileged to also work with you I know you've been organizing uh, Miss, uh, Eb Miss Ebony. And uh, today we are very also honored on the show to have your last queen of your program. Can you tell us, before we bring in the queen, can you tell us about the last edition of your program? Yeah, the last edition, which is the seventh um, edition, uh, was held in uh, July this year at Hilton Dockland in London. It was well attended. Um, I'm, I was really, really excited to see the support from the community. And mm -hmm. um, we had, um, uh, I think, um, 10 country represented and the winner for that uh, creativity competition um, is from South Africa. And we have here today and she will say more about herself. So uh, going back again, we've really come this far, organizing events seven uh, times in a row. It's not a joke in the UK. So I want to say well done to all our team. Um, without them, we will not be able to do where we are today. So yeah, that's a bit about the seventh edition of Miss Ebony Ambassador UK 2022. Congratulations. And like you said, it's not easy to be consistent. Um, um, seven years is not um, seven days. It's not seven weeks. It's not seven months. We're talking about years and years and years. So kudos and, and keep doing the good work you're doing out there in United Kingdom. So without wasting most of our time, we'll go straight to business. Let's bring in the much talked about now. The queen, she's right on the screen. How are you? Hello. Tell Hello. us about yourself. Tell us about, <laughs> I know you, you must be excited. You must be excited to be on the platform and you must be excited to make Africa proud and you must be excited to carry the crown among your equals. So how do you feel first and foremost? 
Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Adams. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone that's watching live. Um, my name is Perm Koranzi and I am the current reign queen for Miss Ebony, Ambassador's Creative and Skills. Um, I feel so honoured and privileged to be wearing this crown and title for my country, South Africa. Um, I'm a young mum to two boys. I recently just graduated from university in dance and professional practice. Um, but I really have a strong passion um, for empowering and uplifting teens and youth and just and women as well. So um, by doing this amazing contestant contest, um, I was surrounded by so many beautiful um, black women from different and African countries and you know in the final stages um, of the contestant we all came together the sisterhood really shined through um, because there were a lot of us that you know struggled with our confidence and different aspects of the competition and that sisterhood really shined through we supported each other, we uplifted each other, we shared words, you know, we prayed, but most of all, we had fun and we built such an amazing bond that I think is everything that, you know, Miss Irene wants for Miss Ebony. She wants that sisterhood. She wants us to learn, you know, new skills that we can take to different places and to other countries to you know other locations where we are but more importantly we get to take these skills that we've learned to our home countries and give back to where we come from where we grew up our cultures and backgrounds you know because a lot of places they don't have the same resources that some people do but we're able to go back there and give back and I think that's amazing because you know, not a lot of people do that. You know, you see a lot of people that may watch, you know, the TV adverts about, you know, um, donating money here and there, and they'll probably be like, yeah, 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 I'll do that. But majority of the time, they probably don't do that. And, you know, a lot of the times when people look at Africa, they see it as this place that's suffering, that's, you know, dying and all these things. But really, truly, they're some of the most beautiful countries that have the most beautiful cities and villages you know and it's not just a rural, rural areas there's so much beauty in it even if there's rural areas there's beauty in that rural area you know you see people you know on instagram particularly on social media where people go out to do charity work you see them surrounded by young kids who are so joyful they're so grateful you know for their lives and what they have even if it's less than what you know you would want for somebody they're still grateful and they give thanks you know every day for their life for what they have and i think we can take a lot from that ourselves to just be grateful for what we have because there are people out there who have nothing but they live every day with so much joy and happiness and you know it's that hope and faith that i know that they have within them that carries them you know throughout throughout their days and lives and I feel very lucky that I will be traveling there in February to give back and do some charity work, but also do what it is I have a passion for. I really want to inspire the teens and youth that are out there. And um, I hope that I can do that, whether it's through public speaking, whether it's just giving back with resources or even just simply teaching through dance, whatever I do, I hope that that will impact them in some way. Wow, that's really powerful presentation. <laughs> Madam Irene, you've really, you've really, I, I would say Madam Irene has really done a good job. She, she's succeeded in, you know, really, uh, uh, well, let's say mentored her and she's ready and she's making reference to what you do and everything. That's really exciting. I want to ask you, you're talking about our culture, coming back from where you come from. Tell me about South Africa when um did you go back home last tell me those moments back home tell me which which of the you know culture heritage are you from in south africa tell us a little bit about south africa for those that are watching we know the image we know about us south africa so tell us about south africa <laughs> so i'm actually born i was actually born in zimbabwe but i have south african heritage through my mom 
So um, when I entered this amazing contest, you know, we had a discussion of which one I should choose. <laughs> and Baba Irene was like, South Africa, South Africa. And I said, okay, South Africa, here I come. I'm going to come and represent for you. And that I did. And, you know, South Africa is a beautiful place. It's so beautiful. Um, my favorite place is Durban. If you've never been to Durban, please go. It's amazing. You know, the beach is there. Wow. But my other favorite place is um, Sun City. It's like an amusement place, it's like an amusement park. So, you know, here in the UK, we have um, Thought Park and Autumn Flowers. So, in uh, South Africa, you have um, Sun City. That's like my favorite go to place. But I think above all else, my favorite thing is just the culture and the different tribes. So, in my background, I have Zulu, Ndebele, um, Soweto, and another tribe in me, whose name, whose name I have forgotten, but um, Zulu and Ndebele, very similar, you know, um, especially with the speaking, um, but they are different. Um, some of my family members, they can do the clicks, uh, that you hear sometimes in South Africa, but I can't do those clicks at all. But I do have a click in uh, in my name. Um, so my full name is Nonkelo Pearl Kwananzi. So I have the click in my name. <laughs> Would you like to try, Mr. Adams? <laughs> the click you've done. You you said you can't do the click. You actually done the click already. So in your name and you've done it perfectly. <laughs> So I was expecting you, since you said it's um, South Africa, Malawi, uh, sorry, um, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. So I know I know you can speak a bit of Shona. Maita Basa. Oh, no, see, I'm Nebele. Oh, Nebele, OK. I'm so Nebele. I know I know there's Shona in, um, in, in Zimbabwe, too. Yes. So yes. I want to, yes, I want to, yeah, I want to thank you. Uh, the reason why I decided to bring this up, so that people watching out there they want to, you know, hear you talk about where you're from. And I'm excited you're able to, you know, live up to expectation to at least talk about the beautiful places in South Africa. And that is really, really awesome. So we, let's talk about the trip. Madam Erin, I want to bring you now. She made mention, you know, I love the fact that she, she, she's taking it to the next level. She made mention of a trip uh, in February. Can we share more light on that? Uh, thank you, Mr. Adams. Um, the trip that uh, Pearl, uh, Miss Pearl made mention of is um, a charity mission to South Africa. We'll be visiting three um, local uh, villages in South Africa. Um, it's a tradition for Ebony Ambassador as a creativity competition that each winner will visit her country of origin to give back. And uh, successfully, we've been to Ghana, we've been to Sierra Leone, and we've been to Nigeria um uh, i think twice to nigeria because we had two winners from um nigeria um the before um uh, pearl's crowning we were supposed to be go to nigeria uh during the pandemic but we couldn't make the trip due to uh pandemic that was 2020 and pearl was crowned 2021 yeah oh sorry yeah pearl was crowned 2022 and she'll be, she's due to go to um, South Africa next year. So um, why we do this is for us to give back to where we're from. And um, we want to be the change that we want to see. And in being the change that we want to see, we want to use uh, empowerment. Uh, we believe in teaching people how to fish instead of giving them fish. And as I said earlier, Ebony Ambassador stands on skills empowerment. We are very passionate about empowering people. Our going to South Africa is to empower the less privileged in South Africa, which will involve a lot of things from visiting orphanages, um, hospitals, um, running skills workshop for um, young people and also visiting schools, giving talks in schools, and also collaborating with local charity to run a lot of initiative before we, re we return back to the UK. So it's an initiative that is very that I'm very passionate about. Like, um, if this is not done, uh, I feel I, I will feel not fulfilled because um, it's something that I've promised I will want to do, and we will do it. Wow! Thank you. Congratulations! Thank you so much, and. Uh, 
I wish you all the best with your trip and of course with the wonderful job you're doing. Um, for, for the Queen, um, what, what, what are your expectations for this trip? And during your reign, what are the things you want to, uh, as a legacy, because I know each year uh, there's always a new Queen. So what do you think, apart from the charity work to your home country, what do you think you want to bring on board that will make your reign special to Ebony Ambassadors? Thank you, Mr. Adams. Um, I think that I'm, I speak so much about um, empowering women and young girls. Um, and that's a legacy that I really want to leave behind because there's so much that is missing within our teens and our youth, you know, particularly for um, young girls and women, especially with how social media and, you know, societal standards are. You know, um, tradition says that for someone like me, I should be, I should have, you know, been born, went to school, uh, went to college, went to university, you know, did my degree and everything else, had my job and then get married and, you know, and then start settling down. And I know that in some religions and beliefs, you know, they will look down on you because of that, because I've done it backwards and I have two children and I'm not married but I want to be an inspiration for people to say that it's okay for you and I'm not saying that you should go out there and have children no but I'm saying if these things happen don't allow yourself to feel like you're a failure or to feel like you know that you're never going to make it me I'm 28 years old I have done so many things that I never thought I would be able to do um particularly for instance I'm a queen and I never thought I would be saying that or uttering those words because when you look at contestants and pageantries you see that a lot of the times it's white women who are very slim have a certain body build and certain look about them and when you look at me I don't fit into that category I don't fit into that ideal but I want young people to be able to look at me and say if she can do it then I can do it in the same sense you see now they've just um, promoted the new uh, trailer for The Little Mermaid and it's a black woman that's The Little Mermaid which has caused so much controversy but so many young children especially black girls have been able to look at that and say look mummy that's me even young boys oh they look like me she's got my skin and that's amazing that's beautiful and that's exactly what I want to be able to do this contestant is as much as it's just about you know the creative side of it it's also showcasing the beauty that lies within um, African countries, you know, and there's so much beauty there. And I just want people to see that it's not just, you know, white women that can stand out in, in these sort of places. We too can stand out and make a difference and make an impact. You know, we need to be able to do that because we talk a lot of about you know, we should have different cultures and backgrounds and educate each other. Okay, but then how do we do that? How can we do that for these young girls? By making a stand, by making an impact, by doing these things, you know, and showcasing these African countries. And in terms of empowering people, how am I going to do that? Well, by public speaking, going to as many events, events as I can and speaking my truth and also speaking to them about their truth and about you know, being true to who they are and not wanting to change yourselves because society says this, you know, stand up for yourself. A lot of the times I feel like the younger generation feel silenced because, again, society, what politics says and all these things. But I think that when you have that one person who can stand up for you and say the things that you want to say but you feel si silenced you will find some inspiration and empowerment through that person and then you'll be able to say you know what no i have a voice i have something inside of me and if i want to see a change i have to be that change i cannot wait for somebody to come in and hand it to me you know and that's what i don't want for younger people to have someone come in and just hand it to them I want them to stand up for themselves, to walk out and 
have that confidence and boldness to say, I'm going to do this. And even if you fail, you can take that failure, not as a failure, but as a lesson to say, no, I did something. I stepped out of my comfort zone and I prospered. And even if I didn't get there, I still did something because even that small thing that you do, trust me, someone out there is watching and they can see that and they will remember you for that. So take that failure and lesson and learn from it and build something even bigger and better. I think we have to teach them that your failures are not a loss. They're not, they're not negatives. They, they are wins that you can take from and build from and inspire other people. And that's the legacy that I want to leave behind. I want to stay true to who I am. I want to talk the talk and walk the walk. And the only way that I can do that is how I carry myself through my actions and just being as honest and as open as I can be. And in turn, the way that I am teaching other people, they will teach me something too. I think a lot of the times people forget that actually, even if we're older, there is so much for us to learn from the younger generation that you wouldn't even understand. Sometimes they teach us about kindness and humanity and love and forgiveness you know, and I'm just, I'm very excited and I'm very passionate and I'm grateful that I have this platform to be able to do that. And more importantly, I have an amazing queen mother who, as she's mentioned, she does so much, so many hats that I aspire to have. And as long as I'm under her leadership Mm. and role, then I know that I can get there with her guidance and everything that she gives me. Wow. Wow. That is well put together. Thank you very much. I love the fact that you. you want to inspire others. You want to, uh, you know, get others to, you know what, you can do it. If others can do it, you can do it. Because what, like just to, you know, um, agree with you that most of people of color, most time is that ability of saying, you know, that's not for us. We can't do it, you know emotionally you're already backward uh, you, you you that determination is not there i'm happy that you want to to summarize it you want to use your reign to inspire the young africans to actually believe that they can do it and that failure can only be a, a postponed success there's no failure that's lovely and i wish you all the best uh, you. in your brain uh, as we round up uh madam uh, Eb- um, Ebony, Manda Evelyn, you want to say something about your organization as we round up? Um, we were actually fundraising to um, support our charity mission to South Africa. And um, we're doing that through GoFundMe. Please, um, if you go to GoFundMe, you type in Ebony Ambassador Mission to South Africa, you can donate through that means. Or you can also contact Adams. And we can send you our direct account details for you to donate to us the costs um, that we are very passionate about. And that's the reason why we're doing this video today. So please, as Tesco will say, every little help. You don't need to give that much. Every little. If it's one pound, two pound, three pound, it's much appreciated. It will go a long way. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much. And um, Queen uh, Pearl. I want to say thank you, Madam um, Irene. Thank you very much. Uh, like we always say, every little, like you said, uh, which is right. Every little Tesco will say every little uh, counts, every little helps. So let's put heads together. If you're there, you've watched this program now, or you're going to watch it later. Please reach out, support this worthy uh, cause, and let's help and support um, African culture. Let's support a beauty queen, and let's take it to the next level. Thank you very much, both of you, for coming on the platform. I'm happy to have both of you on the platform, and I wish both of you all the best. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, Adams, and have a lovely evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.